But when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play, that's where I draw the line at. But what can't happen is when my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play. It's absolutely overboard. Black people are upset at Keith Lee for criticizing black owned restaurants because they just believe that as black people, we're just supposed to blindly support other black people. That's the real problem. Y'all for whatever reason cannot accept criticism when it comes to black people because y'all think y'all are entitled to black dollars. Shout out to Keith Lee. Brother Keith Lee went down to Atlanta to talk about some of the food restaurants. For those who don't know, Keith Lee is a TikToker who is a food critic and um, for the most most part, he's been ultra positive. There's been several videos that we were going to record on this channel where people were trying to tear him down. But we decided not to give him no energy. But as us, as two people who are residents of Atlanta, mm -hmm. as someone who has grown up in Atlanta mm -hmm. and looking at what's happening after he left Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, I deem it necessary for us to make a video about this because this is crazy. It's insane. We're about to go back on tour. The fifth spot of the family food tour, Atlanta will be there soon. If you know any mom and pop shops that have great food, great customer service, but need the marketing, please either email me, DM me, or leave them in the comments below. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Atlanta, here we come. Every restaurant that me and my family go to, we we're either A, invited by the restaurant themselves, or B, was told about the restaurant a hundred plus times from locals, from people who mention me, from people who email me, DM me. 99% of the time, I never go to a random restaurant. With that being said, my opinion was asked for so many narratives being pushed and it's insane to me i'm lying the narrative is being pushed that my eye roll is fake and i'm lying just to help people then on the same hand if i go to two or three restaurants where i don't have the best experience now i'm tearing down businesses now i'm being mean now i need to shut up i need to mind my business i need to sit down again i can't win for losing i understand everybody gonna have an opinion on the situation you can disagree with me you cannot like what i say completely understand i'm okay with that but when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play that's where I draw the line at. But what can't happen is with my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play. It's absolutely overboard. So Keith Lee goes to a couple of restaurants in Atlanta, uh, in particular, Old Lady Gang, Milk and Honey, a couple of other um, restaurants as well, and he left a negative review. For those who don't know, should've went to American Deli. Should've went to American <laughs> Deli, bro. Should've went to American <laughs> Deli. Damn. But now, to be fair to Keith Lee- Should've hit Hattie B's. Actually, Hattie B's be fucking up sometimes too. All around, a very mixed review of Atlanta. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people got upset at him because, you know, how dare he? How dare he say anything negative- About Atlanta. About Atlanta mm -mm. and all these black people these black owned restaurants, how dare you? The business owners in Atlanta seem to think that their customers are there to serve them and not the other way around. They act as if their customers need them and they don't need their customers. I feel like Atlanta restaurants, they don't like to make money. I feel like they don't like people, they don't like their customers, they just don't fucking like it. The amount of people, okay, that feel like this lady is astounding. Keith Lee did nothing wrong. All he did was expose you. That's it. And now you pissed off that you got exposed. So a bunch of people started making um, excuses for a lot of the restaurants that Keith Lee was trying to um, criticize for. It's very irritating, especially because A, a lot of people who are making excuses for these restaurants, y'all don't live in Atlanta. I have no idea what the experience is for Keith Lee. I have no idea what he was going through. I have no idea what it means when it comes to some of these Atlanta restaurants and how poor the service is, how ridiculous the expectations are. It's just crazy. So much so that one of the business owners actually responded and even their response to what Keith Lee was doing was just ridiculous and passing the blame on other things that had nothing to do with their actual experience. As someone who frequents here, as someone because of your religious belief, you can't eat pork, how often do you find yourself going to restaurants saying, well, I can't eat here because they decide that they're gonna cook the, the everything else on, on, on skillets that are also made with pork? But there's very few restaurants that get it right. Like, Very few. And when they get it wrong, you just have to chalk it up to the game. And then you're supposed to pay for it anyway. Bro, Atlanta even, has convinced me that Southern hospitality, that shit does not exist. Even even, even Keith Lee himself, he has a, um, an allergic reaction to, I think it's um, shellfish. Mm -hmm. So there's certain um, seafood restaurants that he went to that he couldn't eat because they decided not to separate the shellfish, shellfish from the um, regular seafood. That's not, that's, that's, that's a normal expectation. If I have an aller allergic reaction, it's a normal expectation for me to separate things. These are things that are just normal things for whatever reason reason though in the bigger picture here is that I and I don't get this black people are upset at Keith Lee for criticizing black owned restaurants because they just believe that as black people we're just supposed to blindly support other black people that's the real problem y'all for whatever reason cannot accept criticism when it comes to black people because y'all think y'all are entitled to black dollars that makes no sense that's a fact oh my god and what ends up happening is, is that you end up having these restaurants these business owners these people who are are 
a part of the customer service business. That is their job. They're supposed to be serving their customers who find ways to cut corners, who find ways to do the bare minimum because they know for a fact that y'all are going to support blindly just off of the fact that they are black. That's ridiculous. As someone who's lived in Atlanta my entire life, as someone who is fat, as someone who likes to eat, I promise you, I do not go to these restaurants because over the past like five to seven years now, because instead of actually being about the food, instead of actually being about the customer service, instead of actually being about convenience, they've been more about aesthetics. I do not care about no little baby owned restaurant. I don't care about no Jocelyn or Young Jock restaurant. I do not care about these restaurants owned by these multi-millionaires that y'all believe that I'm supposed to give a fuck about because they're black. They are well off. They are fine. They know for a fact they can get away with bare minimum things because they're black and they have a business in, in Wakanda, whatever y'all want to call Atlanta. Y'all niggas who also call it Atlanta Wakanda. Y'all niggas not from Atlanta. I get tired of that shit too. Y'all niggas never been to Africa neither. Y'all niggas never been to Africa. You've never been to Atlanta. Y'all just trying to be different. It's Atlanta, nigga. That's what it is. It's Atlanta. So the it's reason cheese. why I don't eat out and the reason what Keith Lee had discovered is the treatment you get completely depends on whether or not they know you. No idea I'm here. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yes. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take out any number, any contact information, nothing. My family then came and relayed that message to me and I decided to go in myself. We walked in and we were greeted by a nice young lady. And then I met some amazing people who were eating there and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife were done taking pictures, the lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. My mom, my mom-in-law, my sister, they all paying customers just like me. So I want them to be treated just like me. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how are you able to sit me in five minutes? This is her response. How long was that for as far as wait I'm just gonna sit up here. Oh, I mean, it's not the wait, it's not called. Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I didn't tell her. I changed my mind. We're going to go eat somewhere else. And I said, God bless you. And I walked out. On second thought, it's okay. We're we going to go to eat somewhere else. Though. I appreciate it, though. For sure. Thank you. God bless Thank you. Y'all you. No, have a great day. Have a good one. Have a great day. I'm going to be very transparent and honest. I am frustrated. Me and my family just trying to eat food. That's all we try to do. At the same time, I am frustrated. I understand we are all humans. I do not agree. I do not support. I do not condone shaming this business based on my experience. Oh, that's, God. A, that's the other thing. Bro, when they know me, bro, I'm Different. in there ASAP. Give me, you want a private room. Ah, ah, ah. When they don't know you, you it's skip like the line. all of that, bro. You want to sit down immediately. And then if they don't know you, you just fuck it, bro. You might just have to wait in this line indefinitely. There's no, like, you can't, there's no way to reserve. You just there for three hours. They get the meal wrong, all of that. Personally, me, bro, that's why DoorDash is superior. I nigga, that shit just arrived to my door. And you know what's so crazy? Keith Lee, throughout his time in Atlanta, he saw that. He was like, yo, I just wanted to sit down and get some food, but there's people in these cars that are sitting. They've been waiting for an hour and a half. Don't service me. Whatever table you are going to give me, give it to those people that have been in their cars for over an hour and a half. And why are you going to give it to me? And FYI, to the people in Atlanta, stop allowing that shit, bro. Why the fuck are you sitting in your car for an hour and a half for mid food? For mid overpriced food with crazy, what, what bougie ass aesthetics. Y'all niggas in Atlanta go to places just so y'all can say y'all been to the places. Not because you actually enjoy the food, not because you actually enjoy the customer service, not because it's actually convenient, but just so you can say, oh, I've been there before. That's the only reason why y'all go. That's the reason why they know they can just do bullshit. It's plenty of black people here in Atlanta who have black owned restaurants mm -hmm. who are doing amazing things. Bro, let them hear me, dog. <laughs> let these niggas hear me. Love that. There's plenty of them, bro. Just because I criticize one black owned restaurant doesn't mean all of Atlanta is gonna go down in flames, bro. That's not how that works. There's plenty of other black owned restaurants, not only do other people go to, but Keith Lee was also inspiring, elevating, and aiding their business. Y'all sit here and y'all just allow anything to happen. Bro, I'm telling you, people desire what they feel like is difficult to get. If it's a two hour wait to get into, what was that place? Atlanta Breakfast Club, some shit like that. Yes. Bro, they're gonna wait two hours because they know it's a highly 
desired place. If you just spam them all around the city, now it seemed less desirable because there's no long line. Which I tried to tell people that. Atlanta Breakfast Club was the first place he went to. One of the first places he, he went, went there? to. Yeah, he went to. Oh, it. shit. He went there. You know what he said? Yeah. Matter of fact, you tell me your experience on Atlanta Breakfast Club, yeah. and I'm a, I promise you it's the exact same thing he said. You ain't even seen this shit. It was it was just like breakfast food. Okay, it but it wasn't, it wasn't nothing crazy. No, it, it, it was well, okay. what did you order? The shrimp and grits. Oh, I can't man. have grits. So I don't remember what I ordered. Oh, I went there one time. The oh, line was dumb long. It was like an hour long. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they told me that was a light day. It, it was. Yeah, the only reason I went is because I was with that guy. Mm. She really wanted her guy. Now, where did you where did you wait at? Outside. Because you can't wait inside. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally all he said. Fresh off the plane, ATL. The first place we went to is Atlanta Breakfast Club. I got it. Let's try it. And rate them one through 10. We spent $144.60. But granted, we got food with five adults and two kids. The customer service was interesting. While the people were nice, the rules they had set were very unique. We initially tried to do takeout, but when we came in, they said we couldn't sit down and there was no space at the bar for us to stand. So we had to stand outside to order our food. And then we decided we just going to dine in. But two people in our party stepped out for a second. Because again, we fresh off the plane, so everybody was trying to get situated. The waitress, again, she was nice, but she told us she couldn't take any orders where she couldn't do anything until everybody set out. No water, no coffee, no drink orders. She also said they can only do one order and there's no add-ons. Like, if you want to add on afterwards, it's a wrap. One order for the whole table. She wouldn't even explain the menu to us. But again, she was very nice. I just understand that those are their rules. Unique to me, but... That is the Atlanta Breakfast Club experience. Just letting you know. Outside of the shrimp and grits, I do like that. You can't have it because he does have pork in it. But... Outside the shrimp and grits, no, that's that, that's an experience. There's nothing wrong with that. And like Aiden just said, they could put more of them around the city. They could expand and get a bigger building. They could do those things to make it more convenient for the people who want to go so you don't have to sit there and wait an hour, hour and a half, two hours every single time you go. They want, it, make it, they want you to make it feel like it's the experience, the exclusivity, so you can go home and be like, ooh, I went to Atlanta Breakfast Club today. You can put on your IG, oh my God, I got to Atlanta Breakfast Club today. And when I see it, I see a dumbass who waited in line for an hour and a half in a hot ass Atlanta sun for mid breakfast food when I can go to Waffle House, IHOP, I can cook the shit at my own crib for half the price and for half the wait time. That's what I see. Bro, there's actually like good local restaurants in Atlanta that aren't these hype ones. Yeah. These hype ones kind of treat themselves like exclusive country clubs, bro. Yes. And there's no sense in trying to like, why? If, if you think the food is fire and you want to wait through all that, it's completely on you. But on God, there's some fire food with no wait time in Atlanta, bro. So there's no need for you to do that. You can find them bitches on DoorDash. You can find them down the street. I just feel like he, I think a lot of people ask Keith Lee to go to these places. They so do. He so went. he said that. He said that as well. He said, these are places that I don't even know about. Y'all tell me to come here and I'm giving you my authentic response when I go to these places. These, I didn't know. I don't know about these places. He did. He clearly said it. I don't know about these places. People email me. Y'all tell me to keep going all the time, every every single time. And so I go to these places and I give you all my authentic response. And to the places coming from somebody who live in Atlanta, bro, everything he said about a lot of these places were true. This is not some made up experience. These are things that even people in Atlanta experience as well. And like Agent said, bro, there are places in Atlanta that are really good. The smaller mom and pops, the hole in the wall type spots, or they be fire especially on the east and south side of Atlanta. Bro, people in Atlanta, we know not to sh actually eat in Atlanta. Everybody know to go on the east side of town or go on the south side of town where it's actual really good food and it's not about the aesthetics. Come on, bro. <clears throat> y'all, y'all, I don't know why people are try trying to like find something to hate on Keith Lee about. This yeah. is a crazy thing to hate on Keith. He got, he's getting death threats. Yeah. Family getting death threats. He getting death threats. People sitting here saying, how dare you talk bad about black businesses? Bro, they in the, they're in the business of customer service, bro. That's what they're here for. But I do not, y'all are not entitled to a positive review because we both share the same skin tone. Y'all are not, y'all are just not. And it is amazing to me that black people have a hard time taking criticism because that's all this is. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Because yes, you're, it, it literally you're black should actually and, be. and the customers a lot of time are black. Shouldn't you be going out your way to provide them the best customer service? Why isn't it the other way around? Why is it like the customer is entitled to bless you? Like at the end of the day, bro, you are providing a service. It's a restaurant. You feel me? Like it is a product or a service. So if your shit is not fire, like niggas is not entitled to give you shit. The business owners in Atlanta seem to think that their customers are there to serve them and not the other way around. They act as if their customers need them and they don't need their customers. From the ridiculous rules to the fees that are applied to literally everything, they act as if just because they open their business in Atlanta, that their business is a luxury. Your business isn't a luxury. If anything, your business is an inconvenience to everybody. Something that they actually posted. Do you think that any reputable business would ever post something like this?
First of all, the rules that they came up with contradict each other. And they're so unserious with the things that they're saying. Because you can open a business doesn't mean that you should. People do anything to make a name for themselves, even if that name is synonymous with bad customer service and failure. But again, the response is exactly how they treat their customers. None of it was shocking. It was very telling. It was very on brand. They even say, who is Keith Lee? As quiet as it's kept, I didn't know who the hell Milk and Honey was. He could have introduced you to a wider audience on a good note. But instead, this is the route that you chose to take because this is the way that you treat your customers. This is the way that you handle business. And I can only see failure for you. But some examples got to be made, and hopefully you are one of those examples. And the fact that they think like that, I just don't believe that rest restaurants like that that think like that are going to be around for a while. They're not. Because when the hype of your restaurant dies, and the food is mid, and the service is bad, you're cooked. The good thing about Popeyes is Popeyes in Atlanta has the worst customer service on earth. If they get my order correct, it's a damn miracle. Yep. That's all it is. But the food is so amazing. My nigga. Popeyes is so delicious. I might spin back every once in a while, even though I know they could get my shit wrong. So when your food is made, customer service made, and on top of that, this shit is expensive and out the way and takes dumb long. Yo, there's too much negatives in it. And look, at the end of the day, I don't even think he was being an asshole the way like we're no, talking about wasn't. it. Like, I don't, I think, I think he was being as respectful as he could be given what y'all, how y'all were treating him in those situations. And if and he's a food critic, my nigga. That's what I'm saying. That's he's a food critic. He's supposed to criticize. That's literally his image and who he is on the internet, bro. Keith Lee, if he doesn't already have a YouTube, Keith Lee, bro, does he have a YouTube channel? I think he does. Yeah. But he needs to have a, his YouTube channel to have like 10 million views per video because the food community on YouTube is huge. There's niggas that go around the world to like India and try food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Keith Lee, bro, if you watch this video, I'm telling you right now, you have the potential to be the biggest food reviewer on all of YouTube and make hundreds of millions of dollars, my nigga. Please get your YouTube channel correct, travel the world and do this shit because like people really respect what you have to say and I think it's because it's what you're saying is authentic. You feel me? You nigga, they can't, someone can't buy your review. But on top of that, you just like to experience different types of foods. Fuck Atlanta in America. I think he could dead ass like travel the whole world doing this. He probably can. And I, I, bro, I don't know if you watch food YouTube videos, but they're fucking huge. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they doing like five million per like the biggest channels. Shout out to Keith Lee. Shout out for the positivity, my brother. You keep it pushing out there. Do all the amazing things that you continue to do. We will continue to highlight all the the lives that you change in, in the positive way. And for the people out there who um who decide to take criticism the wrong way because for whatever reason you think that being black means that I'm just supposed to immediately support you regardless of what you do. Yeah, shut the fuck up. People like you make me disgusting. I'm sick of people like you. Please stop. Um, let's please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And until next time, we'll see you all later. Peace.